Uh, hey guys, what's going on? So, if you aren't subscribed to Avron Gaming's Discord, um, under his upcoming updates, uh, he posted this October 19th. I have learned never to doubt his, uh, his upcoming updates, um, because every single time he's always been correct. And he posted this October 19th, um, and it was a, a Nerf Mermaid buff flicker, which they've already done. Uh, rating changes, arena, leagues, and so on. Battle pass changes, which, which sounded like a complete, like, ridiculous thing because the battle pass is like, it's fine right now. Um, there's a New Year's event and two new units. Uh, clan war changings, or at the, uh, at the very least, ratings what we're, are gonna change for clan war. Um, and, uh, optimization researches, uh, in production, but could all, could, but could be after 23.0. Spectator mode for tournament mode and clan member games, video service, your live stream, uh, inside games, and more. Uh, Rush Royale just posted all of that. <laughs> uh, Rush TV and spectator mode, changes to clan war mechanics, battle pass update, um, and then, uh, New Year's and Christmas are just around the corner, which means a special uh, festive uh, event awaits us. Unusual challenges, quests, fun, gifts, and a special guest from the Magic Lamp. Obviously, uh, this guy. Um, and obviously, I, I, love I love that they didn't even need to talk about it. But yeah, that's a Harley Quinn right there. That's a different looking Harley Quinn right there. Harley Quinn is definitely getting talents. Uh, they didn't even need to. They didn't even need to announce that. They were just like, "Yeah, people will know. Pe people know what's going on." So if you aren't uh, subscribed to a friend gaming's Discord, probably do that. You would have had this information back in October. <laughs> um, but yeah, they uh, they just announced uh, 23.0. Um, I just wanted to talk about this really quick because I think it's kind of interesting. Um, obviously, uh, a genie. Um, I don't think. Dark, I, I, I want Dark Faction to get a common unit. A genie does not feel like a common unit. I mean, it could be. Um, but it, I think it's weird that, uh, that Dark Faction doesn't have common, a common or a rare unit. Um, but specifically because it's part of an event, it's obviously going to be legendary. Um, we love our game and want to uh, evolve it. Over many years to achieve this, we've planned a lot of changes for all players from beginners uh, to the most experienced. In this version, we will pr improve early game balance. Uh, the game's beginning will be will become easier and friendlier. All the necessary units, talents, and even game mechanics will become more accessible. Um, you will learn more in a separate article. Um, anything for new players uh, to want to stay in the game like that? Uh, something that where it's easier to obtain units or it's easier to obtain cores um, if you are newer. Um, I think it's good. Uh, I think that will help them obtain a bigger fan base. Um, I think that more people will stay for longer if they don't feel like the grind is impossible. Um, if they give like new players better rewards for something, um, yeah, I think that all of that is good. So I have two thoughts on the Battle Pass update. Uh, the line of rewards will be revised, um, and it says that it, it'll either maintain um, or in some cases improve the current bonuses received. So they're saying that it's not going to become worse. Um, and that's good. Um, in this case, the premium part of the pass will be divided into two parts. If you are not sure that you will have time to complete the battle pass to its full potential, then you can use a simpler and cheaper option that gives access to the first half of the rewards um, during the season. Um, and then during the season, you can upgrade it at any time and gain access to other rewards. I have two thoughts, and that depends on what they decide to do. The current Battle Pass started at $10. I think it's now like $12. It's not like an, a significant difference, but it's a difference. Um, they can go one of two ways on this. They can either say that the first, because it's 104, uh, it's 104 uh, tiers, um, they can either say that the first 50 tiers are $5, or $6, I, I suppose, $6, and then if you decide to go further, like, and you, f you do the whole thing, it becomes the same $12 that you would have spent anyway. Um, and, and if they do this, I think that that's a very good change. I think that's a very good change for, for them as a company, um, because then they will, uh, they will allow, or 
people, if $12 was restrictive for you, um, $12 per month, uh, to spend on this game, maybe $6 isn't, and then you can get the first half of the rewards, and maybe you, you know, you, you obtained a lot of money this, this month, and then all of a sudden you're like, eh, you know what, I can do the other six, and I think that that's good. I think that if they do it that way, I think that that's good. If they, however, say that the first half is $12, but the second half, which is the cool stuff, is another $12, and they use this as a way to charge more without, like, saying that you're charging more, I think that that's really bad. And I think that $20 is incredibly restrictive. If it goes, if it goes beyond what it currently is, um, to that degree, I think that that might be really restrictive for people. And I think people that were doing it to begin with will now think twice on whether or not they want, they care about those rewards, um, altogether. I mean, obviously if they did it that way, and, you know, like, the, the page of secrets is in that, it'll obviously be in that latter half, uh, like, the two, uh, the two pages. Like, you'll probably get the one page, um, early, and then the two pages on the second one, um, or the latter half. Um, I think that people that were paying before would probably still pay because that's still a good value. Um, but I think that if they do it that way, I feel like a lot more people will, like, stop paying money for the battle pass, um, which is the one thing that I would always recommend people pay. Um, but if they do it to where it's just the first half is cheaper and then the second half or the both halves is the same price, I think that's good. But I guess we'll see. Uh, changes to Clan Wars mechanics, uh, part one. Uh, since this update, uh, matchmaking no longer depends on opponents' ranking progress. Uh, this will help avoid situations where newcomers are destroyed in a clan war and high-ranking player uh, encounters opponents that are too easy for them. This is them actively uh, stating that PvP will start to matter. Uh, this will encourage people to play PvP. Um, for months now... Um, I, I, it started when I said, I think I broke tournament. Um, I did a video a long time ago. Uh, it, you can find it. It says, I, I think I broke tournament. Uh, it's when I actively stopped playing PVP. Um, because everything, every person that you faced within the game was based off of your PVP score. So if you just didn't play PVP for the whole month and you just waited, um, you could, you could play easy players or easier players. Um, and it's gotten to the, I think it's gotten to the point where people, enough people have caught on to where they've started to notice that nobody plays PVP, um, which is probably why they added challenge of the seven, but the challenge of the seven rewards are not that great. So people still continue to not play PVP. Um, and, and so I think this is their fix, their actual fix, um, to fixing tournament. And I think that's good. Um, I think that it's going to. I, I, I don't know how they're going to change how the ranking system or the, the, the matchup system works in a uh, tournament, but if they change that in tournament and it works, I think they'll eventually change it to, uh, to PVP um, or the matchmaking. However, that matchmaking system works. I think that they'll, they'll relatively change that to PVP. Cause like, imagine if you're like, Imagine if they, so the one thing that they've, uh, that people have suggested, um, is that they change it to, uh, crit percentage. Like you get matched with somebody of equal crit, crit percentage to you. Um, to which I stated that if, if that were the case, <laughs> I would restart my account and never buy and never upgrade any common epic or rare ever. And only upgrade legendaries because then that's another uh, that's a different way to break that system. If you only upgraded your legendaries, yes, you would have a low crit, but yeah, you know, take a level fifteen demon hunter into you know nine hundred, you know, go up against other people who also have a thousand crit. You know, <laughs> like that would be the opposite of you know, like that would be the uh, the a way to break the game that way if you were going to actively do that. Um, but I don't know. I guess we'll see uh, how this works. Um, 
Rush TV in spectator mode, you'll be able to follow the progress of your clanmates' games, view the history of battles, and connect to streams right during uh, uh, during the Random League event. I have no thoughts on this. Um, this seems like a more uh, comprehensive version of worldwide battles, just being able to see battles. Um, maybe you could see active battles, but even then... I don't find myself wanting to, like, just spectate a battle. Um, balance changes for units Sea Dog, Demon Hunter, Bruiser, Inquisitor, Riding Hood, and others. Um, I think it's very obvious that in, uh, that uh, Riding Hood and Demon Hunter are getting nerfs. Um, the scaling that both of those cards have, uh, they're going into the trillions of damage um, when they're facing each other. Because they are... Uh, damage wise, um, they are the, uh, top two units that stack very, very well. That they have the, uh, the, 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 um, the scaling of how their abilities stack is insane. Um, and it's just, it just far outweighs everybody else. Um, I did a stream where I was comparing, uh, even Blooming Dash. Blooming Dash has a higher, uh, stack rating, uh, than, uh, Floral Frenzy. I was comparing, uh, per stack, uh, what you're getting off of a Blooming Dash Blade Dancer and what you're getting off of an uh, Absorption of Evil, uh, Demon Hunter, and it's insane. Um, I think it was like 1.5 per move of Blooming Dash, uh, up to 30, something really low, uh, maybe up to like 50, um, whereas per stack on an Absorption of Evil, uh, Demon Hunter, you're getting uh, times five, or you're getting five points of stack, um, or five, you're getting five percent per stack up to 90, and then it's one percent after that. Whereas Bloom and Dash Blade Dancer is like after the 50, you get like 0.8 or something, 0.85 or something, I don't know, something really low. Um, and so, and that's why, um, in a microcosm, why Demon Hunter is so good. Uh, the, the rate, at the percentage of what you're getting as stacks is just so insane that it just outclasses everything that's not Riding Hood or itself. Um, and that's why when you when you see battles, look for uh, the mirror match battles and you'll see the insane damage numbers that those can produce. Um, so I'm pretty sure that Riding Hood and um, Demon Hunter are probably getting nerfs. Uh, sea Dog is probably going to get a nerf, probably to the Ghost uh, the first ability, um, they might even change. I could see them changing, uh, the ghost ability to the second ability and just like, uh, flip flopping them like they did with Meteor, um, or Meteor or Minotaur, one of those two. Um, and it's not that big of a change for people who have like a max one, but I feel like they could do that. Um, that would also make people want to play, uh, to get a level 11 Sea Dog, um, in order for it to be better quote unquote better. Um, because I feel like the ghost ability is the thing that most people use it for. Being able to go through shields, um, with the necromancer, uh, a necromancer auto shutting down everything on the edges and then it being able to go through shields and which means go through mermaid, um, is, is what makes it insane. And if they make the, if they make that ability either shorter um, that would nerf it, or if they made it to 11 instead of 9, uh, I think that is kind of a nerf as well. Um, Bruiser, uh, it's funny that, like, they mentioned Bruiser, because I, I, have, I always think about Bruiser every so often, where, like, Bruiser, when it first came out with Talons, um, it was ruling the meta, and it was doing insane damage, and after that patch, I've never seen it again. Nobody talks about it. It's no, it's nowhere to be found in like the, you know, like in the top meta. Um, and for that, when it was dropped, when like it had talents and when it got first dropped, like I have a, um, like I have a, a tab in my, uh, in my playlists and it's just like epic battles. And there is an epic battle with a bruiser. It's like a bruiser versus an inquisitor, I think. And it does like hundreds, it was doing like hundreds of billions of damage and just like nobody cares about it anymore. And I've never, I've never seen it since. Um, so bruiser's probably going to get a buff. Um, if they nerf, 
all of these other cards like Riding Hood uh, and Demon Hunter, there's a part of me that thinks that they might buff Inquisitor because nobody plays Inquisitor anymore. Which is ironic because I'm almost at a level 15 and I felt so bad about upgrading it because I don't think anybody uses it anymore. Um, I feel like more people use Demon Hunter, Riding Hood, uh, Robot Clock, Robot uh, Shaman, um, they, especially because of the, the, the Mermaid nerf. Um, that, that deck became better. Tesla Clock, um, people are using Meteor Minotaur, um, and I, I feel like Inquisitor has just dropped off so much, um, that Inquisitor is, like, a step above a Blade Dancer, but, like, Cultist also beats it, um, I feel like it's, it, it's so precarious, uh, the setup is so precarious now, um, when at some point it used to be, like, invincible, like, you couldn't, like, touch it, and now with the mermaid nerf and the portal keeper nerf or the portal keeper inquisitor nerf. Um, there's just so many things that allow it to, uh, to not be a threat. And I feel like inquisitor might get a buff. Um, I don't think it'll be a large buff, but I think it'll be a buff. Um, and I think that'll surprise people. Um, but yeah, uh, that, that's basically it. Um, I'm excited to see what the genie does. Um, I'm super excited, obviously, for Harlequin talents. Um, I think I have like a level nine Harlequin. I think I've, that was one of those cards that I've just always, uh, sacrificed. Um, because Harlequin at any level does everything. But now that we've seen, you know, Summoner and Dryad and, you know, all these other cards that also just do the one thing, um, become so much better and become such meta cards. Um, I think that, this might make people really question uh, whether or not they should put Harley Quinn or Summoner in, in their deck. Um, because before, it was all about, like, it was all about Harley Quinn Dryad, um, because you get more stacks with Dryad and you get the redundancy for Harley Quinn. Um, but Summoner, when it got talents and it gave you uh, percentages to your damage, then that just became another support card way of get, gaining damage for that deck, uh, which is why it's become the new uh, support card. Um, I think that if Harley Quinn has some game breaking effect, that doesn't have to be like so amazing. There was a part of me that thought that it, 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 like, what if you could copy something and it'll put, or that extra copy, um, if you could copy something and it made an additional copy, but that copy doesn't attack, like, what if it was just that? And it sounds like it would be bad because you can't, you obviously can't, um, copy anything that had, uh, that deals damage, but one, you're getting an extra thing on the field. So it's kind of like a summoner. Um, but then you could also copy dryads. Um, and then that you, that would give you even more dryads. And I feel like that would be, that would push it into being amazing. Um, but yeah, like Harley Quinn is such a, a, a like a weird unit and I hope that they, like they, like they've done in the past, because the mana power up doesn't matter. Um, I hope they change it like summoner. Like there was no reason to give summoner better attack. So they changed that mechanic. There's no reason for Harley Quinn to have more attack. Um, so I, ch I hope they change that mechanic as well. Like when you, like you can, like Harley Quinn now has an activation or something. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited to see what, what they do with that. It's probably going to become, like a, a, the next new like you, we have to max this out support card, um, and now that Enchant Sword has kind of fallen off, and you know like all of the focus is on like Dryad and uh, Summoner, um, I like that another card is going to push into that mix of cards um, and be something else that you can slot in if you don't have the other things. Um, but yeah, I'm like really excited for that. Uh, but that was basically it. Um, I'll catch you guys next video.